guys, welcome to DevOps School. In this video tutorial, we are going to learn about Datadog. But before we begin, let me inform you few things about us. DevOps School is one of the leading platform which offers DevOps, cloud and containers technology training and certification programs for freshers and established professionals who wish to update and consolidate their skills in the dynamic IT scenario. We ensure that the training solutions are delivered by highly experienced domain experts with practical working experience in various verticals. Check out the dates and enroll with us for our upcoming batches. For more info, link and contact details are mentioned in the description below. Okay, so the first run, what, how, how we are going to do that. So guys, here, uh, this is a, your uh, application environment, okay? And here I don't care about what is you have in backend, what you have app server, what is uh, all this thing, I don't care about it. All I care about it, this is the front end. It can be web server or it can be CDN. Basically, this layer you have uh, all the HTTP, uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript images and all. So this is your website endpoint and this is your data doc. Okay, this is the data doc. Now here, this is the user and a user. Um, I'll just make it end user representative like this, multiple end users. So now they will create a traffic here on the front end. Okay, and this front end uh, will need to send the, all the, whatever the real response which you have, it need to be sent to Datadog. Okay, Understand, are you understanding this flow? So people, real user will hit, these are the real user, not robots. This real user using the browser, they will hit at this place and that capturing experience should be captured and that uh, all the data should be sent to the Datadog. And after that, this is your admin, this is you. You will experience and get all the data and then you will identify what is the real user experience for the you know end user so so far so good this flow is clear all of you can you brief it again rajesh i mean i'm sorry i was there on a call for uh, two three minutes can you just yeah it? so i was talking about like uh, real user monitor so first of all this is the real user then we should have one application front end so I don't care about the application backend database and all front end. I'm talking about this front end you have in the web server like Apache and Nginx or CDN. You may have it. The content of sure. this front end is HTML, CSS, JavaScript and all. So it's like that. So now when the real user hit to your applications, whatever the response, this place you should send to the data dog. Okay. And data dog after that, you have all the matrices and you, this is the data dog admin can experience that all this stuff. Make sense. Yeah, now the question is who will send, who will capture uh, this, uh, all the data and send it to the data doc. So that is where that one JavaScript required to be embedded here. Okay, this is the front end, right? So JavaScript you can embed. So this is what I'm trying to show you a demo now. So what I ha have done, I have one application access, uh, which is this is the application real production server access. And uh, here I have a data doc. So you uh, click here, real user monitoring. Uh, you know all these uh, tutorials and all you have anyways, you'll do that, I know that. But let's create a new applications. So here, now the application based out in JavaScript or Android or iOS or React or Flutter. So these all are the base of uh, the front end. These are all front end technologies, okay? Android is also front end, uh, iOS also native, you know, stuff like that. So what is the application name? So I'll just name it Rajesh Kumar dot X, Y, Z. Now, remember that uh, here, uh, when you install the JavaScript, some, some token required. So this token is not API token. This is called client token, mind it. Uh, for the RAM, you need a client token. For the remaining things, you need a API token. So please understand that. So here, uh, a client token will be generated automatically. So can we create these applications? Click on it. So guys, I created these applications. Now here, because the JavaScript uh, JS, so where you, this is the JavaScript, okay? This is the JavaScript. So you want to use NPM. NPM is a front end, uh, again, uh, node package manager. So if you want to uh, put it in NP NPM or you have a sync CDN or sync CDN, anything. So this is also JavaScript. This is also JavaScript. This is also kind of NPM code and all kind of JavaScript. So here you can set the environment. Let's say environment is like production. 
okay and the service name you made it here and collections of 100% you want to collect the user session you can set the uh, if you want to set 50% all stuff like that so everything you have uh, selected and now this code you know what I'll do I'll go for the async here and this code you have to embed in the front end of your application so are you able to see my screen the font style I cannot improve here yes uh, yes yeah so index this is my front end okay for my website and go to the bottom sections this is the older code actually so what I need to do you know I need to delete this guy so um, copy this anything just a second hold on I need to delete the old code otherwise you will not get a right picture and this code this is javascript code and insert oops i made a mistake actually copying not able to understand maybe that okay insert done okay and then save it so now you have to do this code insertion in why this is insert in every page but then you'll say Rajesh how can it be possible uh, you have a 10,000 pages on a website so actually you can do the npm sort of it like that or flutter you can use it reactive native you can this, this will insert that dynamically on each page you can put it in the CDN also so while serving the request they will put that uh, JavaScript over there okay and after that done so uh, I will have to generate some request actually so I feed that and let's go to the ignito mode so cache will not take I'll, I'll generating a home page request by the way a spelling mistake enter I'll have to create a multiple request to your user one time second time third time fourth time fifth time sixth time I'm just generating a request and after that just wait for a few seconds you're waiting for the data so you should get some data so automatically everything is done and uh, or you can also validate whether the JavaScript is uh, is is enabled or not so you can go to the source actually and go to the bottom section of it and you see here uh, this is your application ID can we validate uh, if f54 so application ID here yeah so it's correct it's deployed now let's see waiting for the data just wait for a few more seconds it takes some time okay so it will come now actually if you really want to try it out you know what you can do in your web server apache index.html you are launching right so that you can try uh, put that code in the index.html and all and you can do that i don't know how many of you are comfortable with html you know so i'll let you do that in offline hours and so on so still waiting let me create a traffic mean meanwhile so So Rajesh, you stated that for RAM, I mean token that has to be, I mean the token that we'll be using would be uh, provided by client, right? That's a API. There's an API token, the one which we were using, and this is the okay. client token actually. So this token uh, will be used uh, differently. This will only use for the, uh, you know, what is say uh, for 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 RAM only for. So here this token you see here client token. This is only for the RAM. Why, why is it so? Uh, because uh, see here, understand this way. Uh, uh, you, uh, this uh, API token uh, is having lots of access to your account and uh, lots of other databases. Whereas uh, 
uh, this token we have a limited access uh, to the only RAM. So API token you have used in the APM also, infra also, integration also, everywhere else. But and you can access through the UI also. I mean through API also. But here this client token have no access to uh, everything, only the specific things. So application ID and uh, client token. This has a limited access actually. For security purpose, that's what you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me check this. Still, the data has not come. I don't have a way to pay. So that's what the I public key or private key? I mean, the one you are using. It's not Since a, it, it's not it's a public it, key. It's not a private key. It's a client key for the RAM okay. specific only. So RAM can send all the data from your website to Datadog. Back to application list. Refresh, and here you see these applications. Uh, still, let me check that. So still that it's showing, let me refresh. Still data has not come, that's the reason. And now has come, you see here. So now one day instead of it, five minutes I'll do. Now you see that these are the hits. So how many total hits I did in the last uh, 15 minutes? <clears throat> 95 sessions, user session, maybe some other one also accessing it. So yeah, so it's like this. So now you can access the real user experience here, user session 95 loading time. Still it is loading actually. By the way, uh, real user experience is very bad. Did you see that uh, synthetic monitoring? It was loading in one or two seconds, correct now? Yes. But you see the real user experience is disaster actually. So it's loading in so many seconds. So still I think much, uh, that whole data you have not got it. Uh, so it will take some time. Let me refresh few times. I know that uh, real user experience is very bad because all the assets get loaded, images uh, and many assets are there in this website. So that create a problem actually. So I think, yeah, this is the uh, RAM monitoring. So now we analyze this, all this data and number of sessions here you have. Each session you can study here each session see here so this one is session three point oh no no it's correct actually i was reading some early data which was not giving the right one so this each session i think it's a more or less correct only see uh, this is a this is the problem here we have to check this 10 second it has taken this is a problem and more or less four five that is expected because lots of assets are there and use count error coming so this this is the work which you have in R. Along with that, you can access our other tutorials such as Docker, Ansible, Jenkins, Terraform, Splunk, AWS, Azure, and various other DevOps related premium tutorials with our channel membership. If you would have any issues with our channel membership, you can drop an email to us at contact at devopschool.com or you can also unsubscribe from channel membership anytime if you don't want to continue or did not like the video. To get our channel membership, click on to the join button, select the 3D99 plan and grow your skills immensely. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries, we will reply to them at the earliest. Thanks for watching. Hello everyone, if you would like to access the remaining videos of this playlist or 50 plus more tools which are coming under DevOps, DevSecOps, SRE, DataOps, GitOps, ETC, kindly become our channel members by clicking on the joining button. You would have access to 100s of playlists and 1000s of videos lifetime access with this membership. Enjoy!